Hello and welcome to this special series on population studies. Today we are going to discuss about children, environment and health. Children are our future, numbering over 2.2 billion worldwide, aged 0 to 19 years and representing boundless potential. Child survival and development hinge on basic needs to support life. Among these, a safe, healthy and clean environment is fundamental. Children are exposed to serious health risks from environmental hazards. Environmental risk factors often act in concert and their effects are exacerbated by adverse social and economic conditions, particularly conflict, poverty and malnutrition. There is new knowledge about the special susceptibility of children to environmental risks. Action needs to be taken to allow them to grow up and develop in good health and to contribute to economic and social development. Each year at least 3 million children under the age of 5 die due to environmental related diseases. Acute respiratory infections annually kill an estimated 2 million children under the age of 5. As much as 60% of the acute respiratory infections worldwide are related to environmental conditions. Dharial diseases claim the lives of nearly 1.5 million children every year. 80 to 90 percent of these diarrhea cases are related to environmental conditions, in particular contaminated water and inadequate sanitation. Environmental risks to children vary from region to region. Children in many countries still face the major traditional environmental hazards including unsafe water, lack of sanitation and contaminated food, injuries, indoor air pollution from use of solid fuel, outdoor air pollution and exposure to a myriad of toxic heavy metals, chemicals and hazardous wastes that may be brought home from workplace. However, other children live in adverse environments that are vastly different from those of generations ago. In addition to the traditional environmental hazards due to rapid changes in economic structures, technologies and demography, new or modern environmental hazards have appeared or have been recognized such as the increased use of radiation in pediatric healthcare setting. These may be linked to global challenges such as uncontrolled urbanization, new technologies, industrializations in developing countries, ecosystem degradation and impacts of climate change. Developing regions carry a disproportionately heavy share of the environmental disease burdens and children in developing nations have the highest death rates. In spite of major efforts undertaken by the international organizations, individual countries, the academic community and the concerned non-governmental organizations, child disability and mortality linked to environmental health factors remain high, hindering the ability to meet Millennium Development Goals that is MDGs. Significant action is required to achieve healthier safer and cleaner environments in the places where children live, learn, work and play. This is imperative for child health. It requires using strategies that are available, building on existing programs and partnerships, translating research and knowledge into protective policies and fulfilling political commitments to action. It requires a focus on prevention tackling the causes of the disease at the environmental sources inter alia by strengthening ecosystem management thereby exploiting win-win scenarios for child health and the environment. Preventive interventions on the environmental management and health sector sites have proven to be effective in protecting children from adverse exposures and provide a wealth of knowledge and experience from which we can build a strong foundation for informed and effective action.
building on tools and mechanism already available. Interventions on children's health and environment should benefit and contribute to broader efforts aimed at catalyzing the policy, institutional and investment changes required to reduce the environmental threats to health. Policies targeting this specific vulnerable group should be a key component within packages of interventions that address health and environment programs in an integrated manner with a view to optimizing benefits to both sectors. In support of sustainable development over the last 20 years, there have been acknowledgments at the highest level of the need to protect the environment in order to underpin efforts to safeguard child health. As far as 1989, states pledged in the Convention on the Rights of the Child to combat disease and malnutrition, taking into consideration the dangers and the risk of environmental pollution. WHO held two international conferences on children's health and the environment, the first in Bangkok in 2002 and the second in Buenos Aires in 2005 and both made commitments for further action in the area. In 2004, the WHO European region developed a policy framework called the Children's Environmental Health Action Plan, which contains four regional priority goals linking well with the MDGs and being implemented by the majority of the Europe's 53 countries. All over the world, regional health and environment ministerial meetings have highlighted the importance of working across sectors to improve child health. Recently, the call for action to address children's environmental health has been gaining momentum as more is now known about how adverse environments can put children's growth, development, well-being and very survival at risk. Notably, the G8 Circus high-level environmental ministerial meeting in 2009 concluded that more should be done to ensure that children are born, grow, develop and thrive in environments with clean air, clean water, safe food and minimal exposure to harmful chemicals. Two months later, the third WHO International Conference on Children's Health and the Environment was held in Busan, Republic of Korea, hosted by the Korean Ministry of Environment in collaboration with the Ministry of Health, Welfare and Family Affairs and organized by WHO jointly with the national and international partners concerned about children's health and the environment. The conference addressed current and emerging trends, new scientific research findings and the translation of research into policy to protect the children's health from environmental threats. The BUSA pledged for action on children's health and environment in 2009, called on WHO to facilitate the development of global plan of action to improve children's environmental health and regularly monitor and report on its progress. This global plan of action is designed to provide a roadmap for WHO, governments, intergovernmental and non-governmental organizations, all concerned stakeholders to contribute to the attainment of the Millennium Development Goals and other internationally agreed developmental declarations, commitments and goals, in particular those related to reducing infant mortality and ensuring environmental sustainability. The overall goal is to create safe, healthy and clean environments that allow children to grow and develop in good health and to contribute to the economic and social development of societies. To achieve the goal, target areas of work are included in the global plan of action for children's health and environment. Number one is data collection and analysis. Number two is collaborative research. Number three is advocacy. Number four is clinical service delivery. Number five is awareness raising and education. 
as recognized in the Busa pledge. The successful implementation of this global plan of action requires strong partnerships and close networking. Collaborations between and among WHO, WHO collaborating centers and international organizations such as UNICEF and UNEP, national and regional organization, regulatory bodies, governmental agencies and NGOs is essential for putting into action the specific components of the proposed plan and gaining the most benefit from the limited resources. Children environmental health activities have multiple links with other parallel activities such as environmental protection, climate change adaptation, primary health care, specialized hospital based health care, emergency response, disaster risk reduction, occupational health, school activities and housing initiatives and many other activities. It thus become clear that collaborative links have to be set up for each one of the objectives in this plan. An external WHO advisory committee for children's health and environment is also needed to facilitate global efforts to implement this action plan. Strategy 1 Data Collection and Analysis Collect and analyze data on environmentally related disease and disability among children. Data on environmental exposures and environmentally related diseases in children are of vital importance for analyzing trends and setting priorities for prevention and control. In most countries, there are no good registers of environmental conditions and exposures or on the environmentally determined diseases in children and even less on child disabilities. Neither are other factors of vulnerability such as poverty, lack of education or gender measured. In many instances, in the absence of systematic data collection efforts, progress in protecting children's health and the environment has been made on an ad hoc basis arising from the identification of adverse health effects resulting from unsafe toxic environmental exposure by astute healthcare providers who noticed and reported an outbreak or an unusual clinical case. Collection of reports of special observation about children's health and environment into database is important for detecting existing environmental health problems and for planning and organizing intervention and prevention programs. Plan of action is prepare guidance for improving the quality of environmentally related case data collection including data on sentinel cases and key laboratory findings, establish mechanisms especially emphasizing information technology to collect and report new observation of environmental hazards for children and health. Develop a standard tool for estimating the cost of diseases due to environmental hazards. Develop estimates of the disability effects of the environmental hazards. Promote an integrated collection and analysis of data and indicators on health and environment and provide a central place for reporting findings. Promote the use of environmental health related questions in national demographic health surveys and other surveys. Promote environmental monitoring to track for example pollutants in air and water on a local basis over time. Integrate children's environmental health into core health tracking system. Identify existing country level children's environmental health survey and surveillance data for use in global burden of diseases estimates. Strengthen the interaction between the clinical, analytical and policy making sectors in using routine laboratory data on environmental measurement for preventive actions. Promote the mapping of environmental hazards to health by using geographic information system. Promote periodic biomonitoring of chemicals in blood, breast milk and other tissues. Coordinate scientific and technical reviews by health and environment experts to identify knowledge gaps and refine normative health and environmental standards and guidelines strategy. Collaborative research. 
collaborative research strengthen international and intersectoral collaborative research research is critical to the development of children's environmental health policies and action research activities span a broad range from collection and analysis and report of case data in a primary healthcare center that uses the environmental history to the most sophisticated longitudinal studies using biomarkers of exposure vulnerability in children existing research centers have provided the critical mass of scientific information to develop prevention programs for example in the area of asthma and lead exposure and this knowledge has been crucial for national and local programs and also for improving the interventional awareness about the global environmental health issues research provides the scientific and advisory support that policy maker require for promoting policies protective of children's health plan of action develop a global research agenda for children's environmental health which includes a list of high priority research questions and potential research projects by holding a series of leading edge workshops involving relevant experts and stimulate and coordinate longitudinal research on children's environmental health especially those beginning prenatally technical capacity and address political questions develop a network of specialized children's environmental health centers and who collaborating centers in children's environmental health to encourage collaborative research and common proposals also for research and compiling data on children's health and environment to study questions that cannot be answered by single centers alone encourage the establishment of regional laboratory facilities for research on children's environmental health example to develop work and training on biomarkers of exposure vulnerability and effect promote exchanges of students post doctoral fellows and faculty from developing countries with who and other research organization support international workshops and meeting that promote children's environmental health research in developing countries promote and provide technical support for pilot studies of innovative children's environmental health research methodologies promote the inclusion of children's environmental health in new emerging research agenda such as climate change strategy advocacy promote update and implement policies to protect children from environmental threats as children health and environmental issues have been gaining visibility on the international political agenda and co benefits of addressing child health and environment are starting to be recognized now it is the time for capitalizing on this attention and taking action the priority of children's health and environmental health issues should therefore be elevated on national and international agendas opportunities for incorporating a focus on children's health and the environment into ongoing health and environmental programs should be identified and appropriate resource provided for strengthening policies to protect children's health and the environment in all relevant sectors that is environment education development plan of action develop a communication strategy including guidance on risk communication and advocacy tools and disseminate easily understood messages on the environmentally related diseases and how to prevent them promote awareness of children's environmental health among policy makers advocate for the inclusion of children's environmental health in international forums related to children's health and well-being as well as international fora and processes addressing environmental issues that is mercury and hazardous wastes etc and broader global challenges such as climate change and disaster risk reduction domestic and global environmental policies should fully take into account children's differences and the need to reduce environmental contaminants on the health grounds advocate for the nomination of children's environmental health focal points in ministry of health advocate for resources for children's environmental health 
among multi and bilateral donors, foundation, national governments, local agencies and private sectors. Strategy Clinical Service Delivery Clinical capacity building to increase service delivery, improve availability of environmental health clinical services, primary health care has traditionally addressed the key environmental health threats that are referred to in the Alma Atta Declaration. However, the world has changed. New challenges have emerged in the context of technological development, globalization, urbanization, degraded ecosystem and climate change. And therefore, the provision of primary health care should be expanded to help clinicians deal with the environmental threats to children and their communities. Specialized children environmental health unit are able to function as a referral center for the identification, recognition and evaluation of environmental threats and prevention and treatment of adverse environmental exposure in children. Ideally, environmental health services should be provided both in the public health care setting and with backup services from the specialized units. This arrangement would provide complementary services and a safety net for the children in the community. Networking will further enhance strength of both the primary health care centers and specialized children's environmental health units. Plan of action. Integrate children's environmental health into existing public health programs, especially into primary health care program. Promote work on human tissue measurement for contaminants that would enable clinicians to better measure children's exposure to chemicals. This would require uh, some regional specialized environmental health laboratories. Incorporate children's environmental health into the integrated management of childhood illness program. Promote the use of environmental history and workplace exposure history in the context of child care and prenatal visits. Work with nurses to promote children's health and environmental health issues using already established international nurses group. Strategy 5. Awareness, Raising and Education Educate and raise awareness about prevention of environmental exposures and environmentally related diseases in children. There is still a lack of awareness that children are not just little adults. They are uniquely vulnerable to environmental hazards and special attention needs to be paid to reducing their exposure at homes, at school and in the community. There is a need to update providers and adequately inform children, parents, members of the community and other key stakeholders at all levels about the importance of children's health and the environment. The plan of action is to synthesize existing knowledge, science and intervention on the environmental determinants of childhood diseases and disability, publish state-of-the-art reviews on the selected children's environmental health topics and disseminate them widely, develop and maintain information sharing mechanisms with all relevant WHO partners, collaborate with other relevant UN bodies to prepare and disseminate children's health and environmental health care information, for example, via website or CD-ROMs, strengthen the capacity of primary health care workers on the recognition, assessment and prevention of environmentally related effects in children from preconception into adolescence by preparing, updating and disseminating the existing training material on children's health and the environment. Guidance for training curricula and recommendation for competencies for primary care providers and key specialist groups in children's environmental health. Strengthen the capacity of schools and parents associations on the recognition and prevention of environmentally related effects in children from preconception into adolescence by creating a WHO training package for schools and parents. Guidance for primary and secondary school curricula and recommendation for teachers and parents. Encourage countries with established training capacities in children's environmental health to provide expert advice and support for training programs regionally and bilaterally. Promote certification programs for trained 
children's environmental health workers, promote the inclusion of clinical toxicologists in children's health programs at community level, provide seed funding and technical support to networks that promote children's environmental health research in high priority issues and prevention in high burden countries. Facilitate meetings or conferences that incorporate children's environmental health. Promote the use of participatory processes and attention to social, economic and gender condition driving health and environment linkages. Develop a risk communications model, example in response to local concerns such as waste site. Provide communications training as part of effort for scientists to communicate and frame messages more clearly for media. Create communications working groups including media, government and scientists around certain children's health and environment issues. Encourage government to develop hotlines and website to communicate to the public on children's health and environment. Now the conclusion. Children in many countries still face the major traditional environmental hazards including unsafe water and lack of sanitation and contaminated food injuries, indoor air pollution from use of solid fuel, outdoor air pollution and exposure to a myriad of toxic heavy metals, chemicals and hazardous waste that may be brought home from workplace. However, other children live in adverse environment that are vastly different from those of generation ago. In addition to the traditional environmental hazards, due to rapid changes in economic structures, technologies and demography, new or modern environmental hazards have appeared or been recognized such as increased use of radiation in pediatric healthcare setting. To achieve the goal, five target areas of work are included in the Global Plan of Action for Children's Health and Environment. One is data collection and analysis, second is collaborative research, third is advocacy, fourth is clinical service delivery and fifth is awareness raising and education. As recognized in the Busan pledge, the successful implementation of this government plan of action requires strong partnerships and close networking, collaboration between WHO, WHO centers and international organizations such as UNICEF and UNEP, national and regional organization, regulatory bodies, governmental agencies and NGOs is essential for putting into action the specific components of the proposed plan and gaining the most benefit from limited resources. I hope this was of some use to you all. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.